Good day, everyone. Uh, for today's discussion, we will talk about uh, Newton's laws of uh, motion. Last time, we have discussed about uh, different types of forces. We have four fundamental forces, and then we also differentiated the uh, um, the dif uh, we also differentiated contact forces and non-contact uh, forces. So uh, this will be our objectives for this um, morning. First, cite applications of the laws of motion in real life. Second. Apply, the, apply Newton's first law of motion to obtain quantitative and qualitative conclusions about the contact and non-contact forces acting on a body in equilibrium. So that is the key term when we talk about Newton's first law. It should be in equilibrium. First law talks about an object in equilibrium. Third, Apply Newton's second law and kinematics to obtain quantitative and qualitative conclusions about velocity and acceleration uh, of one or more bodies and the contact and non-contact forces acting on one or more bodies. So Newton's second law of motion uh, is talking about the acceleration. Okay, and third and lastly, we will identify um, action-reaction pairs. So that is about... Uh, the third law of motion. So you are all familiar of the laws of motion, I'm sure of that. And uh, we have three laws of motion. First law, we have the law of inertia. Second law, law of acceleration. And then third law, law of interaction. Uh, law of inertia talks about uh, what will happen to an object when there is no net force acting on it. Kapag ka walang net force. Now, law of acceleration, um, describes what will happen. Ano kaya mangyari? Kapag ka, there is already a net force. First law, walang net force. Ano mangyari? The law of inertia. Now, but what if meron ng net force acting on a system? Then that is already law of uh, acceleration. Now, law of interaction is talking about uh, what will happen when two objects interact to each other. So, interaction. Kapag ka interact na yung objects natin, ano yung mangyayari? So basically, these are the key words to identify um, what law is being described in a problem. So for example, if walang net force, then uh, use law of inertia. Now, if there is already a net force, then law of acceleration. Now, if um, there is an interaction between two bodies, then that is law of uh, interaction. Now, sinasabi natin always merong net force. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng net force? Uh, remember our discussion uh, on vectors? When we talk about net force, that is actually the vector sum. So that the sum of all, the, the, the total or the, the sum of all forces acting on that uh, object. Yun ang uh, ibig sabihin ng net force. Uh, so for example, uh, review lang natin kaunti. There is an object. Um, one object, uh, one force acting on that object is 10 newtons to the right. Another object is 5 newtons uh, to the left. Is there a net force? Yes, of course, because there is a difference. You already know that because we have discussed that in, um, in, in our discussion sa vectors. So, ibig sabihin, there is a net force that's law of acceleration. Now, uh, kapag ka wala namang net force, for example, 10 newton to the right, and another 10 newton to the left, of course, walang net force yan. <laughs> Tama, walang net force because uh, 10 minus 10 is zero. So that is law of inertia. So yun ang ibig sabihin natin ng net force. It is just the vector sum of all the forces acting on that uh, object. Okay, so now let us start first with law of inertia. Ano kayang mangyayari kapag ka walang net force acting on an object? So we have two parts of the law of inertia. The first one is at rest, when an object is at rest. <laughs> so when an object is at rest, of course, it will stay at rest. Lain po kayo mag-move ng mga object na nga wala sa. So if that object is at rest, it will uh, be at rest unless there is a net external force acting on it. So for example, this soccer ball, this is at rest. It will not move on itself. Lain mo kayo makalitan na sa ligid. Ah, di ko magpasipa. Muligid-ligid. No, ligid siya. No. That, if, that, if that is at rest, then it will remain at rest. That is very, uh, that is common sense. Hindi yan gagalaw mag-isa. 
unless sisipain yan. Unless there is an external, net external force acting on this ball. Nakuha? So kapag ka walang uh, net external force, of course, that will uh, remain at rest. Matingala ka diha nga mag, mag move na ang mga Nain okay no mag move na imong mga lingkuranan diha mag move lang siya mag move lang siya bisag wala wala net external force makita ka lang nag move lagi na lain po gayo <laughs> so if that is a stress it will remain a stress so that's the first part of the first law of motion the natural tendency of an object is to remain a stress so tayo we will remain a stress or object it will remain a stress unless a non-zero net force acts on it. Okay, and that is very uh, common sense naman, no? Na kung at rest, it will remain at rest. Unless, imurang i-move. Walay object na <laughs> mag-move mag lang on itself. Now, the second part is, what will happen if an object is in motion? Uh, ito pala yung, uh, ano, no? Uh, ito yung demonstration ng law of inertia. Wait lang, na-share sound computer sound with Okay. So, an object at rest will remain at rest. Kagaya ng kapag kasasakay tayo na... When a passenger is standing in a stationary bus that suddenly moves, the movement pushes the passenger backward. Why does this happen? This is due to the inertia of rest experienced by the passenger in the upper part of his body. The body is at rest when the bus is at rest. When the bus starts all of a sudden, the lower part of the body is in contact with the vehicle that started moving. Whereas the upper part of the body continues to be at rest because of the inertia of rest. Okay, so the natural tendency of an object is to remain at rest. Kita yan? So, gumalaw na yung uh, lower part of the body but the natural tendency of an object is to remain at rest. So, magstay siya dito. If there is... So, kapag ka there is a net force, uh, yan, nag-move siya. However, our uh, object remains at rest. Now, uh, the second part of the first law of motion is what will happen um, when an object is in motion. So, consider this illustration. Uh, meron tayong apat na surfaces and uh, we will roll the soccer ball dito sa apat na surfaces. Ang kaibahan sa surface natin is at this um, surface, on this surface, meron tayong uh, mas mataas na friction kasi this is very rough. Tama? So, ibig sabihin, mataas ang friction dito. Pinakamataas ang friction dito. Pagdating dito, medyo uh, smoother na siya compared sa first. Okay? So, uh, medyo smooth na yung surface natin. Dito, uh, smoother din siya compared sa second. Then dito, uh, smoother na siya compared sa third. Okay, so ibig sabihin, the frictional force uh, decreases dito sa habang pababa tayo sa surfaces natin. So ano kaya mangyayari sa ating bola when we will roll this along these surfaces? Um, first, dito sa first, sa first situation, of course, uh, this ball will come to a stop. Tama? Alam natin yan. Mag-stop talaga yan. Bakit kayo mag-stop yan? Of course, because there is friction. So mag-stop yan uh, at this point. However, mag-stop siya at a very short distance. Mula dito, uh, yan lang. That's, that's a short distance lang ang pag-stop niya. Bakit? Kasi napaka-rough ng surface. Now, what if um, we will make that surface uh, smoother? Ano kaya mangyayari? Of course, uh, since meron naman din itong friction, of course, mag-stop pa din ito ang bola, tama? However, uh, mag-stop ito at a farther distance. Mas malayo yung makover niya na distance compared sa first na surface. So, mas malayo ngayon ang nakover niya na distance. Bakit? Kasi smoother na yung surface compared sa uh, first surface. Now, what if uh, gagawin pa din natin smoother ang surface? compared sa, sa second na surface. So of course, since meron pa din tayong friction, ibig sabihin, um, mag-stop pa din yung ating bola, mag-stop pa din ang ating object kasi nga merong friction. However, medyo malayo na ngayon ang aabutin ng ating surface. Mas malayo na compared sa uh, second illustration. So aabot na siya hanggang dito farther distance na ang matravel ng ating surface. Now, what if 
So if you notice, kapag ka i-decrease natin yung friction, mas malayo yung matravel ng ating object. Now what if wala talagang friction? Ano mayayari? So kapag ka wala ng friction, of course, it follows na kapag ka walang friction acting on uh, this object, this object will continue moving forever. Tama? Hindi na siya mag-stop. Bakit? Anong lang ba yung nagpa-stop dito? Yung force. Yung force ang nagpa-stop dito. Yung net external force na friction ang nagpa-stop. So what if tatanggalin natin yung friction in the absence of net force? Walang net force acting on that object. Then that object will continue moving forever. Okay? So the natural tendency, the natural tendency of an object is to continue moving with constant velocity unless a non-zero net force acts on it. So kapag ka wala namang uh, net force acting on our object, then our object will continue moving. Okay, so meron tayong two parts. Unang part, the first part of the law of inertia is at rest. So it will continue at rest. Now, the second part is when it is already moving, what will happen? So it will continue to move forever unless there is a net force acting on it. So kapag walang net force, of course, it will remain at rest and then it will continue moving uh, forever. So this is a demonstration. Uh, remember, velocity, meron tayong uh, dalawang uh, key term pag sinabi nating velocity. Una, meron yung speed. And then the second one is meron yung direction. Tama? So the natural tendency is to remain in constant motion with constant speed and constant direction. So yun ang ibig sabihin natin, di ba? Pag sinabi nating velocity. So for part two, uh, meron tayong, uh, ganito yung mangyari. I'm sure familiar kayo sa, sa mangyari. What if um, sumakay ka sa, sa moving na bus ba ito? train, bus for example. Ano mangyayari? With the application of sharp brakes, the bus stops all of a sudden and the passengers tend to fall forward. This is due to inertia of motion experienced by the upper part of the body. When the bus is moving, the whole body of the passenger is in a state of motion. A sudden halt caused by the lower part of the passenger's body that is in contact with the bus comes to rest. However, the upper portion of the body remains in the state of motion due to the inertia of motion causing the passenger to fall forward when the bus stops suddenly. Okay, so our object when in motion it will remain in motion. It will uh, maintain its state of motion. That's the natural tendency. Kaya nga, when, uh, kapag ka mag, may mag-sudden stop, kapag ka sumakay ka sa uh, bus or jeep, mag-sudden stop. So pag-stop na niya. But our body is in motion. So the natural tendency is to maintain its state of motion. Mag-move pa din yan. Mungkin ako ginahin mo pag-college ko. Sakay ko jeep. <laughs> Sakay ko jeep. So na ako sa tumoy sa jeep. Of course, padulong o panakan. Sakay ko sa dulo ng jeep. Sakay. Then ay akong crash dito sa pika's pika side sa jeep. So, sa akong himoon. Pag mukalit lang na, di ba? Pag musakay ka o jeep, pag uh, nag-park nag ang jeep, and then mukalit siya o uh, move. So, of course, maana ka, tama? An object at rest will remain at rest. Now, what if it is already moving? Nag-move na ang jeep at um, 30 kilometers per hour. Nag-move na. However, na ini para, di ba? Break mo na dayo ng jeep. Pag naay mo para, so break. So, ang sa himoon mo? Nai mong crash dito. Ah, na <laughs> Bangga kasi mong crash, naman. So Because your object is in motion, it will maintain its state of motion. So kung nai mong crash dito, bangga kasi ya. Yeah. Sorry, crash. Law of inertia. <laughs> and na yung himoon sa So again, uh, when uh, your body is in motion, it will remain uh, in motion. Unless there, in, there is an external force. In that case, kinsa ang external force? <laughs> Ay mga crush ang mga external force. So siya ang nakapastop sa iyo mga. Thank you, crush. <laughs> so an object, when it is already moving, it will remain in motion unless there is a constant, uh, there is a net force, net external force acting on you, on that object. 
Now remember, velocity talks about speed and direction. So I know ma- familiar kayo kapag kaliliko yung ano. For example, nakatry mo, nagsakay sa jeep ng murag half lang, imong, half lang sa lubot ang makasakay sa jeep. Tapos makalit lang likod, ah, mahulog ka. <laughs> uh, that, that is also part of the law of inertia. So titinan natin ngayon sa another demonstration. What yeah. happens when a fast-moving bus negotiates a right-hand curve on the road? The passengers will tilt to the left. Inertia of direction is the tendency of a body to oppose any change in the direction of its Ayun. motion. So kapag kaliligaw, napansin niyo na, for example, ha, padulong madukog, ano, taga panakan mo ko dati. Klasiko kali siya, SPC. Diha sa, ano bitang palikok, padulong buhangin, kanang mulikok diha ba? Nang likok kayo sa nga tanan, there's a flyover ba na? Sky, insa na? sana diha kanang paliko padulog kag pumadulog na kag buhangin gikan kag bahada so what if uh, nagsakay ka kag experience mo siguro kana nagsakay ka kanang pinaka half na lang sa half na lang sa imong lubot ang makalingkod sa jeep ulang lang ka manong half na lang pud ako pamasahi be <laughs> now what if muliko og kalit ang uh, jeep diha liko ah mahulog ka why because your body uh, tend to rem- uh, your body tends to remain in constant direction that is law of inertia. So uh, this last illustration ito mura og kanang ano mura og katong sige na kanang kay David ba na siya David og Goliath nga sige buhian. So uh, it will uh, remain in constant direction. That's the natural tendency of our um, object. So kapag dito siya nag-stop of course it will move in straight line. Constant lang ang direction. Okay? So so we have two parts sa law of inertia. First, when it is at rest, it will remain at rest. Second, when it is in motion, it will remain in constant speed, in constant direction, unless there is a net force. So ibig sabihin, law of inertia talks about what will happen when there is no net force, when the net external force acting on our system is zero newton. So kapag ka zero newton, what will happen to our object? It's either um, it will remain at rest or it will remain um, in constant motion. That's the natural tendency of our object. Okay. Now let's have um, a situation when there is, what if meron talagang net force? Ano may yari kapag may net force na? That is now the concern of the law of acceleration. According to uh, Newton's laws of motion, if there is a net force, if there is indeed a net force acting on that system, then it will accelerate. Tama? It will accelerate in the direction of the force. So for example, uh, kani, na net force, for example, then it will move. Tama? It will accelerate. It will, it will start to move. So again, if there is a net force, then it will accelerate. If there is a net force acting on that object, then it will accelerate. So for example, uh, this is at rest. It will remain at rest unless... Nakita ba ninyo? Wala din ako. Wala akong pakita. Nakita na. Wala din pa no? Wait lang ha. Ayan, yan na. For example, ito. Um, this is at rest. So it will remain at rest unless there is a net external force acting on it. Now, what if there is an external force? Then it will accelerate. Okay? It will accelerate in the direction of the force. So papunta doon ang force, then papunta din siya doon mag-accelerate. So that is the meaning of the law of uh, law of acceleration. Now, what? how can we describe the acceleration of that object. According to this law, that acceleration, that acceleration is directly proportional to the net force. So ano ibig sabihin ng directly proportional to the net force acting on uh, that object? Directly, uh, tandaan ha, directly proportional. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin nun, kapag ka mas malakas yung force, of course, it will accelerate faster. So for example, uh, ito, compare natin sa dalawang picture. Ano yung mas mag-accelerate? Ito, of course, let us assume na mas mataas yung force dito. 
dito uh, mas mahina lang yung force. So of course, ano yung mas mag-accelerate? Of course, ito yung mas ma mas mag-accelerate if ever mas mataas yung force acting on it. Of course, kung mas malakas yung force na acting on an object, of course it will accelerate faster. <laughs> Tama? It will accelerate kapag ka mas mabagal lang, ang mas mabagal, mas mahina lang yung force, uh, cute kay nga force. Of course, mas mahina or mas mabagal din yung acceleration ng ating object. So that's the meaning of direct proportionality between acceleration and net force. The higher or the stronger the net force, the faster the acceleration. The lesser the net force, the slower the acceleration. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng direct proportionality. Now, um, what if mas mabigat? What if naman mas acceleration? According to this law, acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of an object. So, of course, logically, experience would tell us na napakahirap i-move, i-accelerate ang mas mabigat. So, for example, in this situation, ano yung mas mataas yung acceleration? Itong kotse or itong bus? Of course, mas mataas ang acceleration ng kotse. Bakit? Kasi less massive. So, that's the meaning of inverse proportionality between acceleration and mass. Kapag ka mas mabigat, mas mabagal, mas mabagal yung acceleration. Kapag ka mas magaan, of course, mas ma mataas yung acceleration. Tama? So again, uh, meron tayong dalawa. Una, direct proportionality sa force at acceleration. And second, inverse proportionality sa uh, acceleration and sa mass. So uh, the law of acceleration can be summarized uh, using this mathematical uh, description. Acceleration is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. So direct sa force, inverse sa mass. That's the meaning of the law, uh, the, the law of acceleration, the second law of motion. So kapag uh, tataas si force, of course, tataas din si acceleration. Kapag uh, bababa si force, of course, bababa din si acceleration. That's the meaning of uh, direct proportionality. Now, the inverse proportionality between acceleration and mass uh, is this. Kapag ka mas mabigat, of course, mas mabagal ang acceleration. Inverse, kabaliktaran. Kapag ka mas magaan, of course, mas mataas ang acceleration. Inverse proportionality between uh, force and mass. Nakuha? So ano kaya mangyayari kapag uh, mag-double si force? Of course, kapag uh, mag-double si force, mag-double din si acceleration, inverse proportion, uh, direct proportionality. Kapag uh, mag-quadruple si force, ano mangyayari sa acceleration? Of course, mag-four times din kasi four yan. Okay? So kapag uh, mag-three uh, times si force, three times, of course, si acceleration mag-three times din. Okay? Now what if Sa mass naman tayo. Ano ang mayayari kapag mag-double si mass? Of course, mag-one half. Kay, uh, naman sa taas. Naman is sa denominator. So, one half si acceleration. What will happen kapag mag-quadruple uh, si mass? Of course, it will become one-fourth. Tama? Kasi one divided by four. Now, what if mag-three uh, times si mass? One-third. Okay? Now, what if mag double si force and mag double si mass but that is just 2 divided by 2 2 divided by 2 is 1 so it will remain the same tama kasi 2 divided by 2 is 1 now what if mag um, quadruple si force and mag uh, double si mass 4 divided by 2 is 2 so mag 2 times si acceleration Okay. Now, what if mag, um, mag one half si force, mag, uh, mag double si mass? Ano mangyayari? One half ang force, mag double ang mass. One half divided by two. Pila man ang one half divided by two? That is one fourth. So, mag one fourth si acceleration. So, ganun lang ang gagawin. Now, what if mag double si force, Mag half si mass, double and half. So 2 divided by 1 half, what will happen? 
four times. So magquadruple si acceleration. So that is the meaning of the law of acceleration. It is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. Okay, and that is why uh, when we cross multiply mass, cross multiply natin si mass, we can obtain the equation summation of force or the net force is equal to the mass times acceleration. So that is why meron kang equation na F is equal to MA. Actually, that is not only F, it is actually net force is equal to MA. You already know what's the meaning of net force. So this is the second law of motion. Remember the first law of motion, net force is equal to zero Newton. The second law of motion tells us that net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Take that of that, huh? Okay. Now the third law is concerned with law of interaction. What will happen when uh, two objects interact? So either physical contact or uh, non-contact, physical or non-contact force. So for example, um, dito sa dalawa, ang the force, meron kang hammer, imuhang gihapak sa nail. So of course, there is a force exerted by the hammer on, uh, let us call hammer A. Let us call, uh, let us call uh, the nail B. So of course, the force, this is the force exerted by the hammer, exerted by the hammer on the nail. Tama? May force na exert si hammer sa nail. Dito, meron ding force, according to law of interaction, there is also a force exerted by the nail on the hammer. Okay, so uh, there, there is a force exerted by the hammer on the nail. Okay? And what does law of interaction tells us about um, the, the relationship? Among the two, they are just familiar. For every reaction, uh, for every action, there is equal and oppositely, oppositely directed uh, reaction. Diba, ano man na? So basically, F uh, A B yan, is just equal to F B A, pero opposite ang direction. So lagyan ng negative. O, diba? So they are just basically uh, equal lang ang force. So for example, ang force nga exert ni mo sa nail is a uh, 10 newton then that mean that the nail the nail also exerts uh, a force dito sa hammer which is negative 10 newton equal in magnitude opposite in direction so ganun lang yun lang ang ibig sabihin ng uh, action reaction law of interaction for example iko na ko dire sa pader uh, mag-exert ko for, uh, force sa pad pader. Of course, I exerted a force on the wall. In turn, the wall exerts a force on me. So, forces actually comes in pair. Pair yan sila. Wala tayong single force. Single isolated force. Wala. For example, gisagpa, gisagpa ni mong friend. So there is a force exerted by the hand on the face. In turn, the face also exerts a force on the hand. <laughs> okay? Which is equal in magnitude and opposite in uh, direction. Okay, let's have a, let's let's have another example. Parang hindi pa claro. For example, the earth and the moon. Earth at saka si moon. Si earth uh, exerts a force on the moon. Let's call this uh, B. B C Earth, A C Moon. Left to right na now. Earth, of course, yeah. Earth, of course, exerts a force on the moon. So the Earth exerts F B A. So the force, uh, Earth exerts a force on the moon. So A. In turn, in turn, Moon also exerts a force on B. So naghatakan yan sila. Naghatakan. Now, what is the relationship uh, between these forces? 
ito silang dalawa. The relationship is just, they are just the same, equal lang yan. So force exerted by earth on the moon is just equal to the force exerted by the moon on a... Nga nabita, nga nung A o B? Moon o moon o earth. <laughs> by the moon on earth. Ah, e, moon o... M o E na lang nga kami. <laughs> so uh, let, let us call this earth uh, E. This is moon M. So of course, the earth exerts a force on the moon. Okay? In turn, the moon also exerts a force on Earth. So, pareho lang. So, kung gibira ni Earth si moon, si moon pod, nagbira pod kay Earth. Para siyang tag of war ba? Tag of war. That is always uh, the law of interaction. And what is the relationship uh, between uh, these two forces? They are just the same. F uh, E M is just the same as F M E, equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Okay? Nakuha? Lao pa make sense? Lao pa make sense? Okay. Pero bakit uh, bakit si mas mataas yung acceleration ni Moon? Of course, kasi uh, mas mababa yung kanyang mass. So, equal lang sila ng force. Mas nag-accelerate lang si Moon kasi mas mababa yung kanyang mass compared kay Earth. The same way sa Earth at saka kay Sun. Sino yung uh, mas mataas ang force na exert Si Earth or si Sun? Of course, the same. That's the law of interaction. They exert the same, uh, they exert the same amount of force. Pero bakit mas, mas mabilis yung acceleration ni Earth? Kasi mas magaan si Earth kaysa kay Sun. Nakawa? For every action, there is equal and oppositely directed uh, reaction. For example, ha? Hatag ko another example. Ay, wala pa din eh. Nakanisa. <coughs> Pansin mo siguro mo, law of uh, interaction. For example, uh, there is uh, a bullet. For example, padulong dito ang bullet. Of course, there is a recoil. Tama? Mga nang... Mga nakatras... If ever possible, so there is a reaction. Now, what is the force? What is the? How are we going to compare the force? They are just the same. So, for example, the force dito is um 100 newton. Of course, the force here is also 100 newton, pero negative, kay oppositely directed man. Pero bakit mas nagaccelerate si ano? Bakit mas nagaccelerate si bullet? Of course, because bullet is less massive. Mas magaan. Remember the second law of motion? Mas magaan. Nakuha? So the force are just, uh, the force, the forces acting are just the same. Nagkaiba lang sila sa mass. Like, so for example, na tayo bus. Uh, bus ha, og, asa man ako i-drawing si bus o si ano. Dari for example, um, na ako i bus. Sorry. Bus doon niya, for example. Please na bus na iportahan dere of course pintana pintana uh, <laughs> na puy portahan dere di ba naman ang bus pintana na pud na for example bus na andi natay a uh, bicycle for example a uh, motorcycle sa pag drive motorcycle na na uh, ting 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 na na di ba ting ting <laughs> Ano, motorcycle. What if magbangga na ang, ang bus o ang motorcycle? Uh, I-erase na ako niya. Ala! Ay, na-erase na nan. So what if nagbangga ay eh, sulat kong drawing at mag-drawing kong usaban eh? Na, na buings. <laughs> so, bus na ni na nindari na, na, bus na siya habas. And then ay motorcycle nagbangga daw sila. So for example, nagbangga dari is ni <laughs> For example, nagbangga ang bus ng motorcycle which exerts a greater amount of force when they interact. So of course, may force nag-exert si bus kay motorcycle. So ayan, may force nag-exert si bus kay motorcycle. Of course, in turn, 
that motorcycle also exerts a force on the bus. Exert po force on the bus. And what can we say about that forces? Those forces, they don't. What can we say about uh, those forces? They are just the same. They are just equal. So kapag kasi bus nag-exert ng uh, fifth, uh, 100 newton kay uh, motorcycle, in turn, that motorcycle also exerts 100 newton force on the bus in the opposite direction. So lagyan natin ng negative. Pero bakit mas nag-accelerate si motorcycle? Bakit mas malaki yung damage kay motorcycle kaysa kay bus? Of course, dahil less massive si motorcycle. Pero ang force nila, just the same. Less massive man si motorcycle. So mas uh, malaki yung damage. Mas malaki yung uh, acceleration niya. Naku, ha? So that's law of uh, action-reaction. Forces always comes. Uh, forces always come in um, pairs. By pair, yan. Okay. Another example. Dito, um, rocket launch. So there is a force. Eh, for example, itong uh, thrust. Tawag natin dito thrust. So there is a force exerted by the thrust. Okay. Of course, in turn, the thrust also exerts a force on the rocket. Okay. And uh, what can we say about the force? Just the same in magnitude. So for example, this is um, 1 million, 1 million ane? newton. Of course, also 1 million newton. Uh, they are just the same in magnitude, but in the opposite direction. Nakuha? So that is law of interaction. So... Uh, that is the conceptual, ano, conceptual, uh, the concepts. That is all about the concepts of the law of motion. Okay. Later, uh, mamaya, we will be having our problem solving. 